In 2017, I started a 3D printing business from home, and by 2020, I had scaled it to over six figures. Then COVID hit, my income fell a little bit, so I decided to automate most of the process, and I've now automated it to the point where I only have to spend about two to four hours a week on custom jobs at home. Want to learn how I did it? So don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and join me on this fantastic printing voyage. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Christopher Morton. I'm the one that runs this channel, Automated Income Lifestyle. And what I'm about to show you in this video series, this right here is my first attempt at automation. This was the first thing that I had ever automated away from me. So even though this video will, series will outline how I automated it, this is actually bigger than that. I'm going to show you how to identify the best product for you to make and sell, as well as giving you some examples of some niches, just to give you an idea, Springboard. 3D design tools that even a toddler can use, and then keeping it very simple, a shipping software out there that is free and just as good as all the paid services, which is actually how I automated my business, and I will explain that later. Because you're like, wait a minute, shipping software? How did that automate anything? I will show you. In this first video for this series, we are going to talk about how to select a product and how to find your market. Necessity is the mother of invention. And I've included that quote for a very valuable reason. When I started this, I was not a 3D printing hobbyist looking for a product that I could sell. I started from a completely different angle. And I think that there's a lot of people out there who are literally at the brink of this angle, but maybe don't have the money to pay for a 3D designer and think the whole thing is so complex that it stifles their idea. So I wanted to show you how to manifest that idea. In 2016, there was a newly forming niche that needed cigar molds. I was starting out in the cannabis industry and we needed a product and I stumbled onto cannabis cigars made with traditional tobacco cigar molds. And I was just mind blown. I knew immediately that I wanted to get into that to kind of master that and to push that. And so my primary business, Canagar Tools, is the thing that turned into Six Figures, which is a brand and a tool set that I created. And 3D printing happened to be perfect for this particular tool. All the existing tools at the time were available in very specific sizes, usually for big tobacco cigars, but we needed much smaller sizes. We needed an array of different shapes and things like that. And I was contacting cigar mold companies. I was finding wooden molds and things I could have and made online, uh, kind of in limited quantity. But wood had problems, you know, totally separate from this video. And plastic turned out to be okay, but it was going to cost me close to 10 grand per order to get just one size to test because of their minimum orders. So I found a specific niche in which 3D printing applied perfectly and would allow me to create all the sizes that I needed. And what actually ended up happening to me is everyone around me who was part of that niche wanted my tools, so I started selling them. And then after that, I launched a website and kind of the rest is history. So my specific example is an industry that had a problem a particular need and finding a way that 3D printing would fulfill that need. I purchased a 3D printer for myself to make the tools that I needed. I had zero experience in 3D design, meaning I didn't know CAD, I didn't know any of that stuff. I got my printer and I instantly had a problem. How do I make something that I want to make? Can't I just print and sell the 3D models that I find online on Thingiverse? No, there are laws against it. Even though those models are freely available, most of them are not commercially available. Some of them are. You have to read into the licensing, but for the most part, you're not going to be able to start a store just freely printing what's available. It's also going to be hard to start up a service. You're competing with monstrous sized businesses. And unfortunately, it's going to be really hard to get an edge on your competition if you're just offering 3D printing as a service outside of a, a very trustworthy word of mouth network. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but that is not what I did. This is why I recommend going niche. This will ultimately be 
what builds your business, what builds your reputation. And later on, you can even approach different 3D printing partners, show them the business and the demand for your product. And you can then leverage deals with those businesses like I have to take it off your hands if you want to do that one day. But look for a market that has a need, but also has a problem fulfilling that need. Then do some research and find out if 3D printing would be a viable option for fulfilling that need. I cannot stress this enough. Ideally, this need will be found in an industry connected to a hobby that you are already passionate about. The more you can be an authority on something beyond just the printed part, this will make everything so much easier. If you can find a way to apply 3D printing to something that is already in your life that you are an authority about, you will be able to push this without even trying. I had a need. And it turns out that the industry that I wanted to get into also had this need. 3D printing turned out to be not only a viable option, but to really be perfect for what I was trying to accomplish, which was an assortment of different sizes and shapes made to order in any quantity so that I could empower people to actually research and develop on different products without having to pay these exorbitant minimums to get new sizes and shapes. I've prepackaged a few options that you might investigate. Uh, I think these apply to lots of different people out there. OEM replication car parts. There's all sorts of different cars out there where parts are really hard to find or they're just very, very expensive. I've got a buddy, a Honda guy, who's requested that I've made several parts for him. And, you know, if you're out there and you're a car guy, this might be a perfect niche for you to sniff on and find the right thing for you and run with it. Another idea might be video game accessories or VR headset accessories. This is another example where if you already have a hobby and you're very into something, think to yourself, what is it that I want? What do I need? Is there something that I could have right now that would either make my experience better, augment or enhance my experience? What could that be? You might have the answer to what product you want already and now you need to make it. Another example might be making custom orthotics or prosthetics. This is definitely a little bit more advanced, but I mean, the imagination is your limit here. There is no limit to the way you can enhance or make more useful through intuitive design and having access to tools that allow you to rapidly prototype and manifest those ideas into reality. Pet prosthetics might be your gateway into human prosthetics. Certainly, it would be true that it'll be a lot easier to take something to market and actually find a viable way to sell it without the regulatory burdens that you might have with human prosthetics. And look at some of these things. These are both 3D printed examples and they look amazing. This kind of stuff you can make at home and enhance people's lives, enhance people's pets' lives, really serve a purpose that makes you feel good inside. That concludes the first video in this series. I hope it has helped you a lot and served as a great idea springboard for you to flesh out your product idea. If you like this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll help me keep making videos in the future. Stay tuned for the second video in this series where I'm going to show you what I consider to be the easiest 3D design software known to man.